Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 552, The Ugly Truth About Finasteride, the Post-Finasteride Syndrome. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin, and I am with Rachel Sullivan, who is a doctor, and she is my partner and my daughter. And we're going to talk about the ugly truth about finasteride, which is a drug, and some of you may know it as Propecia or Proscar. And these are medications used for hair loss. Proxy enlargement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, Dr. Sullivan is a family medicine doctor, so she knows all about the different uses of finasteride and what we've used them for in the past. Um, but I'd like to I'd like to know um, how you describe um, finasteride as a medication. What does it do? Okay, so finasteride is a five alpha reductase inhibitor, and what that does is lowers nitric oxide. And by lowering nitric oxide, it actually constricts blood vessels and it slows blood flow. And in doing so, it does that to a lot of organs, but particularly, we talk about um, the prostate because it slows the enlargement of the prostate that just happens with normal male aging. And it also slows blood flow to follicles, hair follicles. So it will slow hair, uh, or it will... So it slows, slows hair loss. Slow hair loss. Yeah, it keeps it. It keeps basically things from going there <laughs> and setting it on fire and making it fall out. So, so when we have hair loss, what you see is the hair follicle slowly dying, mm-hmm. and the and the hair getting. If you've ever had this, uh, usually men have this. Uh, you see the hair getting thinner and thinner and thinner, and it's until it looks like baby hair, like and then it's gone, and then it doesn't grow anymore. So one of the other ways that finasteride works is that it stops the conversion of uh, testosterone into DHT. Mm-hmm. DHT is what gives you acne. It's what gives you hair loss, but it is sometimes gives you hair loss. But it is also um, what gives you sex drive. It's also what gives you your muscle mass. Mm-hmm. And it's also what gives you lots of good things in your body and things that you really don't want to lose. Yeah, I talk about how it kind of gives men their machismo, you know, mm-hmm. as we say in Italy. We, <laughs> we, it makes men um, and women really just feel like themselves again. So they want, and it's always a delicate balance as it is with every hormone, right? You want some, but you don't want a lot. And what I tell um, our patients is when you think of patients with real, or people with really high DHT, you think of an MMA fighter or those guys at the gym um, that have like, they're really big muscles, but they have really greasy skin. They have acne kind of everywhere. They're always they're, sweating. They're always sweating. <laughs> they're bald. Uh-huh. And they're angry. So when you think of MMA fighters, they're always in the news, right, for winning fights um, in the ring, getting into bar mm-hmm. fights, getting yeah. into fights with their mm-hmm. significant others, and more. Um, mm-hmm. So we don't want a high DHT because a high DHT can lead to irritability, anger, um, and other problems as well as all of our physical issues. So, in many ways, it, <laughs> finasteride would be a good thing mm-hmm. if it weren't for the side effects and, right. and for the fact that even if you take just a little finasteride, it can actually drop your DHT mm-hmm. so low that men become impotent. Now, and that's a very common thing. I mean, I have patients that come in to me for sexual problems. Usually it's ED. Then they have no ejaculate. They also have uh, just problems with sex drive, like thinking about sex, wanting to have sex, fantasizing. So that's all gone in many men just because of finasteride. Right. And that's huge. So here you have to choose between hair and sex drive and your personality and your marriage or your right. partnership. 
Yeah, and when we talk about finasteride, um, we're also mentioning that is everything in the 5-alpha reductase inhibitor category, uh, but we always just say finasteride because that's just easier than listing all of them. Mm -hmm. But the big thing that um, we need to talk about, too, is that it's it's effective. It's basically too effective mm -hmm. in treating high DHT. Now, when we talk about, M like what I say with MMA fighters, you don't see people like that all the time. That's a very small percentage mm -hmm. of people where you look mm -hmm. at them and you say, gosh, they must have a really high DHT. That's a really low population. I'm not sure it's natural. It's that. not. Oh, right. So. We're talking, exactly. It's very hard to achieve. It's most likely with black market um, androgens, androgens. Which are from the adrenal gland. Exactly. Uh, so it's really hard to achieve um, naturally or genetically things that just happen to you. That's just not something that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, what we usually see are people who maybe go to their primary care doctor, their dermatologist, their urologist, and they're having complaints of, gosh, I'm losing my hair. I feel like I'm losing hair here on the top of my head. I, my, when I pee, um, men will say my stream is weaker. I feel like I'm not getting all my urine out when I'm going to the bathroom. I feel like I have to get up more than like two to three times at night to pee. And, or, you know, the guy I saw last week, he's like, well, everyone in my family's bald. So I told my primary care doctor that, and all these people going with complaints of, you know, simple things that we could fix with multiple different types of either medications or supplements. And every single one of them is put on daily five milligram finasteride, which is a mm -hmm. very large dose. Now, when we talk about it being too effective, we talk about uh, five milligram daily is a significantly higher dose than what you need to achieve uh, a normal range. Anything. Yes. And it, it, or to treat any of those yes. problems mm -hmm. in general, that's really overkill. So that mm -hmm. means it's decreasing your DHT too and low. you're going to get the side effects of too much finasteride, too little DHT. Exactly. So so that'll drop by night. Your DHT levels will drop by 98% mm -hmm. in many cases. So basically, you they will empty your tank of DHT. So all the things that we love about DHT, all the things that we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, gone. Some guys even say they can't think mm -hmm. because they took the finasteride. Mm -hmm. And what is post-finasteride syndrome? Because this is what this is what has come up in the mm -hmm. newest yes. research lately. Because this is something that we didn't know maybe five years ago, but mm -hmm. they've been researching it, and they've had a lot of cases where men just don't get over it even after they stop the drug. So, right. so explain kind of how that looks. So post-finasteride syndrome is really when we talk about that, it means that the finasteride goes in and it blocks our testosterone receptors on our cells and it blocks them permanently. Permanently. So it doesn't just go in and work until, you, you know, say you missed a few days, it just goes away and then you feel better. Sometimes it can block these receptors forever. And there's no getting it back unless, <laughs> unless uh, you have very healthy testosterone levels of which, you know, when you're in your mid, like low, like basically early 30s, uh, if you have very, very healthy testosterone levels, you might be able to do it on your own. But more likely than not, you will actually have to have testosterone replacement to have your testosterone levels on the high end of normal so that your body is pushed to make more testosterone receptors on those cells so that your body can use testosterone and fix all of those problems. It's 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 a huge it's a huge really? deal for us. We always give testosterone to patients, and I've tried giving testosterone to patients who are on finasteride mm -hmm. at the same time, and I have to use huge amounts mm -hmm. of testosterone to overcome this this drug, mm -hmm. and it's not worth it. I've only done it very long with one patient and I'm about to stop <laughs> mm -hmm. because I just can't get enough testosterone for him to be happy yep. and to have a sex drive and to have an erection mm -hmm. and to keep his hair. But I begged him to stop the finasteride and he won't. So I may have to just say, you know, I can't, I can't keep giving you more and more testosterone so that I can counteract this. At some point he won't feel the testosterone because it's gone over the top. So, mm -hmm. so there are reasons we don't want to go that high on testosterone. Right. Your body becomes numb and you don't feel it, right? I think I forgot to talk about what a receptor is because you, oh, you, yes. have, you have a hormone. Sorry, you have yes. a hormone milieu in your body. Yes. And so your body stores your hormones basically in your bloodstream. And on every cell, there's a little, it, it's like a little receiver for that per particular hormone. So testosterone goes to an androgen receptor. Mm -hmm. And those are, that's what it's called. 
but it's really a receptor for testosterone. And DHT goes to the same receptor. So you can literally block both of those. I've seen an extreme case of complete blocking of uh, the testosterone and DHT receptor. Mm -hmm. And those folks sometimes get uh, ALS. Wow. And so that's a huge deal. Yeah, and that's absolutely. I don't see it often, but that's one of the one of the causes of ALS, wow. and a terrible one. Yeah. But we're not saying this is associated with that. But that's how important the, the mm -hmm. receptor for your androgens are, both men and women. Exactly. And women take this too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we have to keep going up on their testosterone, and then then they go up on their finasteride, and and we keep playing this game. So we've stopped giving finasteride because mm -hmm. it just doesn't work, and the risk is just to raise the benefits. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we talk about, especially with women, with if a woman is on testosterone, right, they think, oh, my hair is thinning. It must be the testosterone. You go to your doctor. <laughs> oh, gosh, you know, you go to your dermatologist. You know, I'm losing my hair. I feel like I'm losing my hair all over. They're like, well, what medications are you taking? Oh, I'm taking bioidentical testosterone replacement. Oh, well, then it's that. They don't test anything They don't test else. anything. It's an easy answer, it's, and they walk out of the room. You know, it's as usual, <laughs> your standard 10-minute doctor appointment mm -hmm. or less where you, they walk in, oh, that's that, bye. You know, here's your finasteride, see ya. They don't check. <laughs> it could be that, you know, and a lot of patients, you know, they have lower, not ours because we monitor it yeah. correctly. But a lot of patients, they have low estrogen levels. Women who are going through menopause, it has, you know, maybe we're going through some changes. Maybe they go to their doctor and they say, gosh, I'm losing my hair here. It could be that they're going through menopause, they're getting low, they have low estrogen levels, and really replacing their estrogen or estradiol, young, good estrogen, would help bring that hair back. But all a dermatologist and sometimes people who are just not as educated see that and they just think finasteride, 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 because they think, oh, well, this might be male pattern baldness. Well, we always see our hair here, right? Because when you pull it back, that's the first mm -hmm. thing you see. That can be estrogen. That can be thyroid. Um, very, very, very rarely is that DHT. We need to. That can also be genetic because I've yes. always had thinner hair there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went back and looked at my pictures when I was 18 years old and had my hair pulled back, mm -hmm. and I always had thinner hair there. It was just genetic. Yeah. Well, and my patient, what I was telling, uh, saying earlier, my patient who said, "Oh, everyone in my family is bald," so um, they just put me on this. Well, finasteride doesn't even treat genetic hair loss. Like that is, it doesn't yeah. even do that. It doesn't so, help that. You're just taking it for nothing. Exactly. And then you're getting all these risks. Right. So, so um, yeah. sadly to say, my whole mother's family is bald yeah, ready, or, or close oh, or close to bald. Um, they they but they all had not not high DHT. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. All all the women had low thyroid. Mm -hmm. All of them. And I mean, it ran in the family. And so once they got their thyroid back treated, they got more hair back. It didn't come back like when they were 30, mm -hmm. but it still came back. Exactly. Yeah. So we, a lot of times when we see, you know, people being put on this, it's not because of a truly defined high DHT level. Like I check your labs and your labs show a high DHT. It's, oh, you have a symptom and in my mind, the very first thing I can think of and the cheapest drug is finasteride. So I just put you on it. So it's not a lot of thought. It's just a lot of prescribing, which as we all know, um, when I did primary care, I would see a patient and she'd say, well, another birthday, another pill, um, which is why I got out of primary care <laughs> because yeah. I didn't want to be basically a certified drug dealer. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. Now, so. um, when we talk about post finasteride syndrome, what does that mean other than uh, impotence, foggy thinking, sarco like uh, low muscle mass, uh, low ejaculate, difficulty with orgasms, uh, depression, depression, suicide? Actually, there is a um, huge lawsuit going on against um, the makers of uh, Proscar finasteride right now in New York, a uh, class action about suicide uh, and depression associated with finasteride use, um, and it's getting bigger and bigger, which um, obviously you know, sexual function and all that, but we also want you to have a men like mentally, mentally we want you to be mentally healthy and to be, feel happy. Um, the whole point of medicine is quality of life. Exactly. And quality of life means that your mood is good. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean taking another antidepressant or another pill. Right. If, if you're already taking a pill that's causing the whole problem, you, yes. you need to get off of that pill. Exactly. So how many, uh, what is the percentage of people who, who are on finasteride who will have like lifelong or long-term mm -hmm. finas post-finasteride syndrome. So right now the current numbers are stating around 3%. But I expect with this newer diagnosis being um, talked about and more important people being educated about this, I believe that the number will be higher. 
much higher. I do too. I do too. From from what we've seen, mm-hmm. it will be so. So what do you, so what do you expect when you go off your finasteride? I mean, yes. it's every time you go on or off a pill, you can expect either either an overreaction or underreaction mm-hmm. to that pill, yes. or, or your body has to get used to the fact that you're not taking it right. Now, if you're taking finasteride for something like hair loss or acne or something um, that uh, basically anything other than prostate enlargement, you can just really go ahead and trial off of it. Um, If you have prostate enlargement, you have difficulty urinating, you do want to talk to uh, your primary care doctor about switching to something else um, that will not give you the same effects. Um, And we can give you some ideas on that. But our big thing um, that we like to tell people about is hair loss. So people take it to have hair, right? And then all of a sudden you stop it and you lose hair and you think, oh my gosh, this was helping me. What am I doing? I'm going to start taking it again. Because I'm not going to believe that doctor that told me yeah. it was good. Why they, tell me, why they tell me to stop that and I'm yeah. losing all my hair? That's actually a natural reaction um, to have. Now, it does not mean your hair will never come back. Your hair will come back for about six weeks, though. You might notice that you have some diffuse hair loss, mm-hmm. breakage, or thinning. And then after that, your hair should, that hair loss should stop or mm-hmm. significantly decrease. Uh, but it's just one of those things. It's kind of like um, an antidepressant. You stop taking it. You say, gosh, well, I feel more anxious. I feel a little more like sweaty. I feel a little, I have a little more sleep problem. Should I just get back on it? Was it working? It's more of a withdrawal effect. Mm-hmm. It's that drug telling you, take me. Yeah. <laughs> and that is yeah. what we, and that's how you, that's how, that's how we stay on drugs for forever. Um, yeah, but we don't want to go through that withdrawal process. Yes, pro- pro- we don't. It's hard, mm-hmm. but it is worth it. And during the, that time, um, that six weeks, you could actually take other things that are more natural mm-hmm. um, or things. Both- Topical or yes. oral medic or oral medications, minerals and vitamins. Mm-hmm. So the um, we have a we have a topical we have a topical um, hair growth. Uh, pro- I guess it's a, it's a foam. compound mm-hmm. compounded foam, mm-hmm. and so people put it on um, every night before they go to bed. Mm-hmm. They can use it twice a day if they they'd like to in the mm-hmm. areas that are thinning. Yes. but it doesn't have finasteride in it, but it still mm-hmm. works. It has minoxidil. And what do you know what the other active ingredients uh, are? Yeah, I know it has uh, caffeine in it yes. so that it'll get down into the air. Melatonin. Um, melatonin. melatonin. Mm-hmm. It has a little bit of retin-A in it because mm-hmm. retin-A is great for cell turnover. So it can mm-hmm. help that uh, that basically everything stay youthful. So it'll help with the turnover and help with that follicle basically restore itself, which I love. It's yeah. what keeps us all other than neurotoxin filler. <laughs> That's what keeps us free. Yeah, free. yeah we, <laughs> we figured that out. Yes. Uh, but that, but we've had that made up for our patients mm-hmm. because we think it's a lot safer. Yes. It is a lot safer Absolutely. than uh, t- using t- uh, finasteride. And, uh, but there, there are some other things mm-hmm. like zinc, 30 milligrams of zinc a day. That's easy. Very easy. Um, and you, you just have to take it mm-hmm. with your other vitamins and yep. that's fine. I mean, that's it. Easy. But there's some other issues that yes. there uh, are herbs and other vitamins you can take. Yes, other things that we can take. Um, I like, well, so if you have a high DHT, truly have a high DHT or high normal, or you also have prostate problems with mm-hmm. difficulty urination, um, something that will not drop your DHT by 98%, but will still drop it a little bit, keep you in a nice, healthy range, mm-hmm. um, is saw palmetto. Yeah. Saw palmetto is wonderful. We've been using it for... <laughs> hundreds of years. Yeah. Um, it just works so well for these problems. Um, and I believe the dosing is around like five, six hundred. Five to seven hundred. Milligrams a day. Yes. And that's just an, or, an oral herb, yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so we use that. We use uh, stinging stinging nettle, but it doesn't sting when you take it <laughs> in a pill form. Yeah. Uh, we also, you know, I remember in our formula, we have vitamin C as well. And mm-hmm. that that's basically anti-inflammatory because inflammation in your hair follicles mm-hmm. is not a good thing and it right. decreases your ability to make hair. Um, right. So we, so some of the other things are, are uh, amino acids because your hair is made out of a protein and right. so you need to have proteins in your diet. That's another reason I find that sometimes people don't have enough meat, fish, eggs uh, or other types of protein, protein in their diet and so their hair gets thin right. and they think it's their thyroid, or they think it's testosterone, or um, it could be the finasteride if they're taking that. But right. so we try to um, increase the protein intake for our patients mm-hmm. that are having hair loss. But I, you really should know why you're losing your hair. 
Right. It really should be looked at in terms of your hormones. And mm -hmm. look at that first. The last thing you could do is go to a dermatologist and get a biopsy of your hair. Mm -hmm. They take a little, it's like a little round biopsy. It's really easy to do. We used to do it on things on skin and, you know, it's as a gynecologist, easy. other things we won't talk about. <laughs> but, it's, but it's, it's really easy. than an eraser head and they can do it in a place where you feel as though you're losing hair but may not be as, um, you obvious. Know, obvious. But it, like I said, we said, it's a, smaller than a racer head. It will not, it will not be noticed. Uh, but and they'll they can be able give to tell. a lot of help. Yes. So we've, and <laughs> we've sent people for that test mm -hmm. to dermatologists in both cities we've been in. And some of the dermatologists go, Oh, you're taking testosterone. You're taking this. You're, mm -hmm. That's, that's it. But they never mm -hmm. say that about finasteride. Right. Exactly. Oh, I forgot. You can have topical finasteride. Oh, yeah, that's true too. So topical finasteride is awesome. So you can put topical finasteride on, on your hair and it won't become, it won't go through your whole body. It'll just work on your scalp. Now that does work very well for people who are having male pattern baldness that have been diagnosed with it by biopsy. That right. would really help. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Um, I also think uh, we need other, I know we talked about estrogen and we talked about mm -hmm. DHT um, and we talked about thyroid, but another thing we really need to think about is stress. Um, mm -hmm. We all have so much stress. Um, especially in the past year, but in general, all as Americans, we usually have a lot higher stress levels, uh, and a lot of us internalize that stress. So we just shove it down deep inside us to not worry anybody else. And that does have physical um, representations. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, your face can swell. You can get that buffalo hump from a cortisol. Because your cortisol goes up. <laughs> you will lose your hair as mm -hmm. well. And so a lot of my patients will say, oh, I'm losing my hair. Oh, and also... Uh, my job, I'm working 80 hours a week. I'm, you know, I wasn't traveling. Now I'm traveling all the time. You know, this and that, all these major changes. I'm taking care of my sick mother yes. and my husband's father. Yes. And, you know, and they're exactly. taking care of everybody but themselves. Exactly. And so that can show a lot of problems too. So really, um, our key here is really getting to the bottom of the hair loss because DHT is, I would say, less than 1% of the, from what I've seen of my mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. Less than one percent of the actual cause of the hair loss. Um, I've seen every other thing. Every, so more, more than thyroid, else. Yeah. high cortisol from stress or from taking cortisol or from mm -hmm. taking steroids. Mm -hmm. um, steroid use and yeah, and st and steroid like use for, yeah, for any kind of autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. um, many of the drugs that you're on, like um, metoprolol, any kind of beta blocker. I've been on that, and that's thin my hair, and it, that does thin your hair. But mm -hmm. and not taking estrogen when you're menopausal, that'll make your hair fall out. As well, yeah. <laughs> you need to have estrogen after your menopausal if you want to have hair. Yeah. So all of those things to have good hair, you have to go back to the same environment your body was in hormonally right. when you were in your 30s. And so that's what we do. That's what we do at Biobalance is we try to get people back to that same hormone level. Not too much DHT, exactly. but which and, we do monitor. Yeah, and you have to have it monitored if you're getting your hormones replaced, mm -hmm. especially with testosterone. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for listening to us, and thank you very much, Dr. Sullivan. Thanks it was a pleasure. Me. We'll have you again. Okay. <laughs> see you soon. And we'll see you next week. Thanks. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.